Hi guys, welcome to Rufio. Welcome to the how to play video for Zodiac. You probably have some idea already of how it plays. Maybe you're just one of them players on a nostalgia trip for one of the most divisive decks ever released into the TCG. Or maybe you are someone that's coming to the game a little bit later. Maybe you're on hiatus like I was during the time that it was out. And you want a little bit of knowledge on how the deck worked. It has perked up a little bit in popularity in recent formats. And there's always going to be people who sort of fiddle with it a little bit. And the fact that Konami is too scared to leave this entirely off the list tells you exactly how potent this deck can be. The intention of today's video is to give you a good idea so you know roughly how it works and gives you a solid foundation on which to build. It also might give you a really good way to know how to pilot the deck for yourself so that you can go ahead and try it out. And of course you'll be better equipped to defeat it too. My name is Joe, this is Rufio. We produce this kind of content for you every single week, three times a week. This kind of absolute nonsense gets put on your screen. So if this is your first time on the channel, you should probably hit, consider hitting subscribe before it's too late. And if this is not your first time on the channel, you already know the kind of garbage that we put out. And I don't really know why you're back, but thank you in either case. But I digress. I'll stop waffling just quickly before we do get stuck in. I want to apologize if there are any weird noises. I do live in a strange house full of spooky things like fat dogs that can't breathe properly. So you may hear a bit of that in the background. But again, let's get stuck in. The Zodiac archetype, known as the 12 Beasts in the OCG, debuted into the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG in the set Raging Tempest in February 2017. The name of the archetype is a clear combination of the words Zoo and Zodiac. The monster names are based on a mix of their respective animal, mixed with a weapon of their choice, for example, Kataroos being a mixture of the animal rooster, and a Katar, which is a type of push dagger which originates from the Indian subcontinent. The deck is made up of level 4 or rank 4 earth attribute beast warrior monsters who are based on the 12 animals from the Chinese zodiac, each monster being more human-esque version of the animals that they represent. Each of these also has a weapon which is held by some Hulk hand type shit giving them all this weird appearance of being some sort of strange furry fantasy dreamt up by Wreck-It Ralph himself. The Zodiac archetype was so successful in its release that it basically saw play as an engine in the vast majority of the top decks at the time, at essentially every competitive level of the game, and this was before it was eventually obliterated infamously just weeks following its reprint in the tins of August 2017. Konami really did hit you with that bait and switch, didn't they? Since then, the deck has largely stayed condemned to the list, the deck eventually saw Dryden come off to one fairly recently, which most people would argue is a fair move in the modern game, but in exchange for Barrage being hit to one, essentially taking away any potential comeback of the deck at all. Clearly, Konami is still terrified of the potential of this deck three years later, and Master Rule 5 does potentially offer the deck a way to come back into the meta if Konami releases the likes of Broad Ball, Rapier, or Barrage from their shackles. So what is it that has made Zodiac so equally loved and hated, and how is it played? Well, before we move into this section discussing the details of what it is the deck does, I do want to touch on a few personal notes. I came back to the game in around October 2017, after a few years away from the game. Much had changed in that time, and despite the oncoming onslaught I faced coming back from the likes of Spiral and 60 card JY Sworn decks, I was frequently spoken to about True Draco and Zoo Days, with a mixture of both full of faces of fondness and grimace. There was a seemingly even split of players who insisted Zoyat Mirrors were amongst the most skillful formats they've ever played in, likening them to a modern GOAT format, and those who abhorred the deck and said that it was one of the most depressing times to be a player of this game. I don't know whether to consider myself to be lucky or unfortunate to have found myself coming to the game in the wake of the deck being sent to the Shadow Realm. I leave that up to you who are there to decide. But I do digress, let us delve into what you're really here for. The deck gained much of its popularity and in the same respect its notoriety by having an unmatched level of consistency. The deck also had many singular card starting positions, any single Zodiac monster giving them the kickstart into their lines of play. 
Not only was a single card getting their plays really insane enough, they gained further consistency in seeing these through the cards of the likes of Barrage and Fire Formation Tenki, which kept them in a position of accessing their engine at any given time. The deck revolves around moving into its XE monsters, which, if they haven't already been shown to be busted enough, they're generic, meaning that any other rank 4 spam engine will add a huge amount of easy access to these, and meaning that they could be added to more or less anything. The XE monsters themselves gained additional effects based on what was granted to them by their materials, ranging from the likes of gaining piercing battle damage, banishing cards, summoning additional monsters from the deck, and even protection effects. These XC monsters also add an attack and defense that was adjusted by having Zodiac monsters attached to them as materials, as well as every XC Zodiac monster being summonable once per turn by being overlaid over an existing XC Zodiac monster other than one of the same name, meaning climbing through these would be an absolute breeze. It's worth noting that largely the deck is now used as an engine. It was compact in particular in size, much like we've seen with many of the other top decks, leaving tons of room for experimentation and being paired with countless other strategies in order to try and gain an edge, particularly in mirror matches. Finally, because of this small engine size, the room for experimentation meant that they could be paired with insanely powerful spell cards too, such as the absolutely mental soul charge, and I don't know who thought that this was a fair card to print, and interrupts such as high hand trap counts and the like. The deck though does have its weaknesses, and there are a few of them, largely dealing with Rapier, stop the opponent's turn, although the ban list itself had an even bigger say in this. For this next part we're going to do a rundown of the Zodiac monsters and what they do and then afterwards we'll take a look at the spell and trap support that is available as an in archetype option for the deck. As with all of these things I'll be glossing over the effects a little in order to shave a lot of time off the video length. For this reason I'd recommend reading the cards themselves which will be shown on the screen but given that you're a Yu-Gi-Oh player we both know that you probably won't read a fucking thing. As a quick note before we do start with these, all of the main deck monsters give an effect to the Beast Warrior monsters that they're attached to as materials, which will be summarised on each, more or less, as the material effect, at least for simplicity. We do, however, start off with the main deck monsters. So we start off with the limited Zodiac Rapier. If it's normal summoned, you can send a Zodiac card from your deck to the graveyard. Then its material effect is... You can detach a material to summon a Rapier from hand or deck, once per turn. After that we have Zodiac Cataroost. If it's destroyed, you can shuffle a Zodiac card from your graveyard into your deck. The material effect lets you, during either player's turn when the XE monster that it's attached to is targeted by a monster effect, detach a material to negate the effect. After that we have Zodiac Ram Ram. If it's destroyed, you can special summon a Zodiac monster from your graveyard, except for Ram Ram. The material effect lets you detach a material to negate a trap or trap effect activation. Following on from that, we have Zodiac Thoroughblade. If it's summoned, you can discard a Zodiac card and then draw one card. The material effect gives the XE monster it's attached to piercing battle damage. We also have Zodiac Whiptail. During either player's turn, you can attach this card from your hand or field to a Beast Warrior XE monster you control. Its material effect is that if it battles an opponent's monster after damage calculation, you banish the opponent's monster. And lastly, for the main deck monsters, we have Zodiac Bunny Blast. If it's destroyed, you can add a Zodiac card from the graveyard to your hand, except for another copy of Bunny Blast. Then for its material effect, during either player's turn, when the opponent activates a spell or spell effect that targets this card, you can detach a material to negate the activation. And next up we move on to the extra deck monsters. Again, these all have a common effect of being able to summon themselves over another Zodiac monster of another name once per turn, and even if they use an XE monster then they can transfer the materials. They also all share the effect of gaining attack and defense equal to the attack and defense of all attached Zodiac monsters. I won't be reading these particular effects with the following cards, again intended to save time. We start off with Zodiac Broadball, which is banned. Once per turn you can detach a material to add a Beast Warrior that can be normal summoned or set from the deck to the hand. Following on from that we have Zodiac Tiger Mortar. 
once per turn. You can detach a material, then target an XE monster you control and one Zodiac monster in your graveyard, then attach that Zodiac monster as material to that XE monster. After that, we have the limited Zodiac Dryden. Once per turn during either player's turn, you can detach a material from this card to pop a face-up card on the field. Following on from that, we have Zodiac Hammer Kong. While it has an XE material, your opponent can't target face-up Zodiac monsters on the field with effects. Once per turn during the end phase, you can detach a material from this card. Once per turn during the end phase, you need to detach a material from this card. We also have Zodiac Chakanine. Once per turn, you can detach a material from this card, then special summon a Zodiac monster in your graveyard, and for the rest of the turn, its effects are negated, and it also can't be used as XE material for a summon. And lastly, we have Zodiac Borbo. Zodiac Borbo can attack directly, and when it inflicts battle damage, when it has 12 or more materials, you can send as many cards as possible from your opponent's hand and field to the graveyard. Then, you change this to defense position. It goes without saying that the hits that the deck has seen so far do mean that it's taken an awfully large hit in terms of its consistency. Most modern variants tend to run Thoroughblade, Ram Ram, Whiptail and Rapier. For the extra deck options the people tend to use a small package which takes advantage of all of these, with the exception of Brawl Ball, well, because it's banned. For this next part we're going to take a look at the spell and trap support that is in archetype for the deck. Just four options here to look through. We start off with Zodiac Sign. All Zodiac monsters you control gain 300 attack and defense. Zodiac Barrage. It's worth quickly noting that this one is limited. You can target and pop a face up card you control to summon a Zodiac monster from your deck. This effect is a hard once per turn. If this card is destroyed by a card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can target a Zodiac X seed you control and attach this card as material to that monster. After that we have Zodiac Combo. You can target a Zodiac XC monster you control, attach a Zodiac monster from your deck to it as material. During either player's turn, except the turn that this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish it from the graveyard, then shuffle in 5 Zodiac cards with different names from the graveyard into the deck of course, and then draw one card. And lastly we have Zodiac Gathering. If a Zodiac X seed you control would detach material to activate in effect, you can detach a material from a different X seed you control instead. This effect is a hard once per turn. You can banish this card from the graveyard, then target two Zodiac X seed monsters you control and attach one of those to the other as material. Largely from these, only Barrage really sees play, sadly being limited to a single copy at this time. For the penultimate part of this video, we'll be taking a look at a few different options that could be considered a good option to try out in the deck or can employ the Zodiac engine. This list is not exhaustive, just intent on giving you a few ideas on things you could consider trying out. We start off with Fire Fists. The synergy here should be pretty self-evident. Beast Warriors, level 4s and tons of spell and trap support that can be lent to and help out the Zodiac cause. There are a handful of these that boost the stats of Beast Warriors and aid with consistency, something that the deck has taken a huge hit to over time. You could also consider the Time Thieves. The Time Thief package revolves around the Exceed summoning mechanic as well as generating advantage, providing interrupts and the like. Also, it being made up of level and rank 4s offers further potential to this combination of the archetypes. For the next part we'll talk about the Link support. There is some generic Lin support that can be offered to the deck that usually comes in the form of Alsa the Earth Charmer, Firefighting Darumadol, and Mrs. Radiant, all of these being fairly self-explanatory. And lastly, we should talk about Exceed support. We couldn't forget this now, could we? There are an absolute endless list of fantastic rank 4 toolbox options that can easily be added to and abused in this deck. The choices of these largely fluctuating from format to format, but we all know what the best options are as a whole. For the final part of this video we'll be taking a look at a handful of sample lists. The intention here isn't to present you with something thoroughly tried and tested, but to give you some deck profiles that you could try out for yourself 
and to build from. We're not going to bullshit you here. We're not going to be like some of the other YouTubers out there that'll tell you that this is the best fucking list in the world. Tier zero, undefeated at locals bollocks. This will be some shit that I've thrown together in a couple of minutes that I think could work really well. I've probably tested most of them, or maybe I haven't. Who knows? Anyway, you'll find out for yourself is to try them out and see how you get on. Again, don't take any of this too seriously. Just something that you can try out to give you some ideas of a direction that you could take the deck in. So that is all for today's video. That weird slopping sound you probably hear in the background is my dog licking his bollocks, I believe. So we won't show you that. It's not very good for the viewers. But hopefully the fact that you've made it this far means you have enjoyed the video. And if you have, again, I implore you to hit subscribe. Fuck off, moth. And uh, that's... Fucking, I hate these goddamn things. Fucking stay outside, you bastards. In any case... I'm getting caught off guard again. If you enjoyed this content, hopefully you have hit subscribe. And if you haven't, you should. Again, I'm just going to keep asking you to do it until you do. But in any case, if you have enjoyed the content, of course, I would like to welcome you back on the channel. If there is anything you'd like to see me cover, definitely go ahead and let me know. I'm producing more of these how to play videos in line with whatever is being requested. I also do market watches, deck profiles, how to play videos and all that kind of good stuff. I go on. In any case, if there's anything that you would like to see, of course, let me know and I'll take it into consideration. As you can tell, I'm getting tired because I'm talking in absolute fucking circles, so I'll stop there. Thank you very much for checking in, guys. If you haven't already, you should most definitely hit subscribe and I will see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.